Hi, anthropology students. Uh, welcome back to uh, the next to last week here. We are in Superstructure, uh, WESH Lesson 7. So WESH Lesson 7 says we fail to examine our assumptions not just because they are hard to see, but also because they are safe and comfortable. They allow Our assumptions allow us to live with the flattering illusion that I am the center of the universe and what matters are my immediate needs and desires. So we have some big questions about morality. Um, being ethical makes you human. All humans, all cultures have morals and ethics, even if they differ radically. There is a right and a wrong in every culture. Um, even within a single culture, what seems like the right thing can be opposite. Okay, so the right thing to do, that's the right thing to do, uh, can seem like opposite to two different people. So we need to give undocumented immigrants food and shelter versus we need to arrest undocumented immigrants and deport them. Both of these seem to be uh, the right thing to do, depending on who you're talking to, um, but they're the opposite thing. Uh, so <laughs> there's right and wrong, but sometimes both are right and wrong, or, or depending on who you're talking to, which, which segment of the society um, you're talking to. Is there a universal morality? Uh, so Kohlberg says that all... Uh, cultures move from self-centered morality based on obedience or self-interest to conformity to rules and law and order uh, and on to universal rights. This is a unilineal evolution. Those of you who've been watching this channel uh, from the beginning know that I'm not a fan of unilineal evolution. Uh, it just so happens, in quotes, uh, that Colbert, just like the Victorian um, uh, political scientists who believe that uh, London was the best place in the world in all time, uh, Kohlberg's own liberal American humanism is at the top. Um, Turiel has modified that to say that the golden rule is actually universal, that, that harming people is wrong. It's always good to avoid harming people. Maybe we can get behind that. We shall see. The nature of human nature, remember the hippies versus the squares during Vietnam or Hobbes versus Rousseau. Uh, these are basic assumptions about human beings, whether Human beings are inherently good, peaceful, cooperative, empathetic, uh, empathic, sorry, and nurturing. Uh, this is uh, Judaism and Islam, which you might be familiar with of the three major Abrahamic religions. Um, Judaism, Judaism and Islam both treat that humans are inherently good. Basically, we're all okay. We just need to figure stuff out. Uh, the opposite of that uh, is that humans uh, are inherently evil, violent, Competitive and selfish. This is what Christianity teaches, at least the the part about the um, uh, uh, irredeemably um, evil. Uh, that nothing human beings on their own can do uh, can uh, can get them to be good, uh, which is what Christianity teaches uh, um, in uh, the doctrine of uh, the um, original sin. Hobbes, um, coming from Scotland. Uh, brought up the social contract of modern society. Remember John Locke and social contract? Uh, so Hobbes says that is what keeps us from killing each other in a war of all against all. So pre-modern society is basically warlike. Uh, um, and this is, this is what you hear from people when they talk about um, anarchy, right? Anarchy is scary because people will uh, start killing each other. Uh, those of us who have lived through anarchy find quite the opposite. We find that people look out for each other and care for each other. Uh, and this is Rousseau's uh, uh, contrast here. Rousseau argues that, in contrast, we lived in nature, in union with nature, in peaceful and egalitarian communities, and modern society was what introduced corruption, competition, and war. So West proposes that hunter-gatherers are warlike, but this is nonsense. Uh, his two examples, and this is where I'm departing from the text, because uh, West is just wrong. He's just straight up wrong. His two examples, uh, Hivaro and Yanomamo, uh, are not hunter-gatherers. Um, they are gardening tribes that have been engaged continually in warfare with an invasion by slavers and armies for at least 300 years uh, when the right-wing anthropologists arrived in the 1940s and decided this was quote-unquote primitive man. Um, there you have it. So we're still back to square one. Whether or not humans are naturally evil, uh, that is Christianity, or naturally good, that is Judaism or Islam, the point is that all primates, including humans, recognize that Harm is wrong, and kindness is better. So chimpanzees have the capacity for empathy, altruism, and justice, and humans do too. Okay, so the problem of cultural variation. 
Uh, we have Schweder's work among the Hindu Brahmins. Uh, the worst thing ever. The ever the, the worst thing you could ever do for a Hindu Brahmin was uh, to get a haircut for the eldest son to get a haircut and to eat chicken the day after his father's death. There's nothing you can do that's worse than that. Number two is eating beef. Number three is eating dog. And number four is a widow eating fish. Um, <laughs> we're sort of we're sort of back to the uh, Orokaiva here and the idea that um, that uh, uh, the worst thing you can do is uh, pretend uh, a false uh, a false uh, lightness that, that you don't have any burden that you don't have you don't have a burden that you don't owe anybody to any, any anything to anybody uh, is the absolute worst thing you can do so we have three different moral systems uh, that, that he's uh, uh, concluding here uh, the ethic of autonomy uh, and you'll remember this from more archivist stuff uh, the highest purpose is to pursue happiness without impinging on uh, the happiness of others and then we have the ethic of community which says the highest purpose is to build up the solidarity and well-being of society including its hierarchies and then we have the ethic of divinity the highest purpose is to revere the sacred by obeying all the required taboos rules and behaviors so some people feel like uh, the most important thing to do is to uh, is to uh, effectively do what you want to do to make your own decisions in life to get married to the person that you want to marry uh, without your parents making you uh, choose someone you didn't like or there's the people who believe that the ethic of community and here you know these are sort of working against each other as with the orokaiba autonomy versus uh, conformity uh, the highest purpose is to build up the solidarity and well-being of society including its hierarchy so bosses uh, you know parents and ancestors and all that all that sort of authority uh, is is also really important and, and many cultures believe in that and then finally this you know following rules for the rules sake alone that we do this because this is what we're supposed to do um, in order to uh, to to remain sacred to remain separated and set apart and uh, devoted to um, uh, to uh, holiness uh, rule making now it's important to remember that overall um, the people who are doing these um, who, who are coming up with these theories uh, tend to be weird and the people that that you live among are weird as well <clears throat> so we have these uh, harmless taboo stories which are only permissible to upper class liberal american humanists uh what we call weird people western educated industrialized rich and democratic um this is not the least this is the uh, one of the least representative groups of humans currently alive uh you know most people in the world are uh, outside of Western Europe and the United States and Canada and Australia. Uh, most of the people on the planet do not have a college education or even much of a high school one. Uh, most people live in um, uh, much more uh, rural, uh, smaller scale societies, um, large uh, cities, that sort of thing. Uh, and then um, most people are not rich. You know the average income globally is like between five and ten thousand dollars a year uh and most people don't live in democratic societies you know where they where they vote for their representatives so weird people are focused on the individuals and objects not on the relationships between them because weird people live in societies where private property is maintained and so if you work your whole life and earn a bunch of money then you get to spend it like you want to um, that's really weird that's not how normal life works normal life is uh, you work really hard uh, at relationships and you make friends with people and then when you need help uh, you rely on them so most of these cultures are sociocentric emphasizing the need for social order solidarity rules and roles above individual needs and desires it's not all about you individually it's about your relationships with other people uh, and how they help you and how you help them so the foundations of morality uh, one theory is that uh, uh, disgust, uh, an intuitive and emotional response, not an intellectual response, uh, is what drives us. Uh, Kantian ethics is always based on the golden rule. Uh, Kantian ethics is sort of what, what is really hard to get, get beyond uh, for many of us. Um, it's an intellectual decision that you always act as if the other were free to choose. 
uh, and you always act to increase that other person's ability to choose freely. Uh, so we don't want to. Um, we want to. We want to always assume uh, that other people um, are making decisions in their own self-interest. Let's stop here. It's ten minutes in. We'll come back to this. This is this is important stuff.